The Handsomest, Drowned Man in the World is a 1968 short story by Colombian author Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Set on a summer day in a small coastal village in South America, it concerns the villagers' reaction to the discovery of a corpse washed up on a beach. Though no one can identify the man, the villagers imagine who he might have been and give him a ceremony celebrating his life. As they plan, they weave a story about the man's identity, which grows richer and more complex until he seems animated and belonging to their world. Though Marquez is best known for his novels, the story is widely considered one of his greatest works. Marquez went on to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1982. The handsomest, drowned man in the world begins on an ordinary Wednesday morning in the village, which is made up of only a handful of wooden buildings. A group of children play on the beach and discover, among the debris washed up from the previous night, the body of a man. The children begin to bury him in the sand, however, the adult villagers soon discover them and collectively determine that it is appropriate to give him a funeral. Because they have very little land for burials, they plan to throw him off the cliff into the sea at the funeral's conclusion. However, first the men set out to search for any surviving relatives. The women stay behind to prepare the man's body for his funeral. Because the man is very tall, they cannot fit him into a house. They wash the mud and seaweed from his face and, discovering that he is extremely handsome, begin to wonder about his marvelous life. An old woman argues confidently that his name can only have been Esteban, and the rest ultimately agree. After failing to dress him in their too small, spare clothes, they decide to dress him in custom-made clothes so that he looks dignified. As they do so, they lament that he must have had trouble fitting into small houses. In the man, they begin to see reflections of their own husbands, and begin to weep. They then place a handkerchief over his face. The men return from their search for the man's family empty-handed, and rejoin the funeral preparations. The women decorate Esteban with artifacts that have religious meaning, including holy water, nails, and a compass. They imagine that the objects will guide Esteban through the afterlife. Observing this, the men grow angry that the women have grown so attached to the man, whom they still see as a dead body. To show them that he is anything but, the women remove the handkerchief from Esteban's face. They immediately see in him the same humility and grace that the women saw. The women leave to collect flowers from nearby villages, since their own is only sparsely vegetated. Women from the neighboring villages trickle in to see Esteban. Eventually, the village becomes so crowded that it is difficult to walk without bumping into people. The funeral attendees decide that Esteban should not be buried without a family, since no one should be sent off as an orphan. From among the village's favorite men and women, they select for him a mother and a father. Then, they select an entire extended family of cousins, aunts, and uncles, which expands until everyone has a familial connection to Esteban. They decide not to bury him at sea using an anchor, instead, they choose to send him over the cliff without weights, imagining that he might one day return to their village. At the same time, they begin to realize how small their home is in the grand scheme of things, and how spare and destitute it is compared to others. Finally, Esteban is buried at sea. To accommodate their memory of him and the hope of his return, the villagers decide to widen all of their doorways, paint their houses in bright hues, and cultivate beds of flowers all around the village. The villagers hope that someday, a cruise ship will pass by and that its passengers will smell the aroma of their flowers. They imagine that the captain will gesture to the shoreline and tell the passengers that it was where Esteban once lived. The handsomest, drowned man in the world is centrally about the role of imagination and hope in civilization building showing that the well-being of a community depends on how it acts towards those it knows least and on those it can only imagine i hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you